Hi, brothers and sisters. Um, so before I begin uh, the study on this final crown, the, the crown of glory, I'd, I'd just like to re reiterate the fact that all of the crowns seem to be just aspects of Christ himself and our shared inheritance in him. Incorruptible, rejoicing, righteousness, life, and glory. Um, let's read Colossians 3, 23 and 24. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us, translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Okay, so we all have this inheritance. And now the crown of glory crown of glory is spoken of in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4. And let's read it with surrounding verses for some context as well. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, in verse 1, Peter says that he, as an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, is a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. And then in verse 4, he tells the elders that are being entrusted to feed and watch over the sheep that belong to the good shepherd, and being good examples for them, with, that when the chief shepherd shall appear, they shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. The first verse that says Peter is a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed reminds me of this scripture in 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And this one. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And also this one. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. And I want to show you the the uh, Greek, the interlinear linear for Second Corinthians three eighteen. 
the one that I read that says, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. It reads like this, um, just straight over from the Greek. It says, we now all having been unveiled in face, the glory of the Lord beholding as in a mirror, the same image are being transformed into from glory to glory, even as from the Lord, the spirit. Okay. Um, so for having been unveiled, this is what I wanted to show you guys here in the Greek. It is to unveil, to take away. Um, it's basically, it means to, um, to unveil or uncover by drawing back the veil. And it's thought to represent a mind not blinded, but, but, but disposed to perceive the glorious majesty of Christ. In fact, if we go back a few verses earlier to verse 14, we see how Christ is the one that removed the veil and how someone with a veiled face is defined. It said, but their minds were blinded for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament which a veil is done away in Christ. And here Paul was referring to Israel and how they don't see Christ in the scriptures, only law, the shadow, but not the reality. And then he goes on to say, but even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Guys, when Christ was crucified, the veil covering the entrance to the Holy of Holies was torn. And we can enter that place where God's throne is, his throne of grace, where his presence is. We aren't in the holy place outside the veil where all the work is being done. The atonement's been made and we can enter in and behold the Lord. Hebrews 10 says this. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And now let's read Romans in chapter 8, verse 16 through 30. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also 
glorified. So Romans speaks of our inheritance and glorification as a done deal as a part of our justification. No one who is justified will not also be glorified or not be a co-heir with Christ. This is Christ sharing his glory with us. In fact, in John 17, when Jesus is speaking to the Father, he says, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, and thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. See, he tore that veil, and we, we can behold him now and be changed from glory to glory. And when we finally see him that day, the day of our redemption, fully as he really is, and no longer through this glass darkly where we have, you know, flesh in the way, we will we will be like him. It's just going to be awesome. That's going to be our crown of glory, guys. Um, really, we have no glory of our own. You know, God says no flesh will glory in his presence, nor are we capable of producing glory. It's all his glory and his doing. Whoever glories, let him glory in the Lord. So this glory is his glory that we reflect and that is wrought into us by Christ himself as part of our glorious inheritance as adopted sons and daughters of God. And we are now accepted in the beloved and we are in Christ and he is in us. None of this is because of works which we determine to do. This is all the work of Christ. Paul said in Philippians 1 that he was confident that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Who will perform it? We don't try to grab the will and take over. We let his spirit lead. Then we know we aren't striving on our flesh and producing dead works. Our job is to believe and to simply be. Be who we are in Christ. Be the branches on the vine. Let him nourish and produce the fruit. By keeping our eyes on Jesus and walking on these stormy waters towards him, we will be walking in those good works he has for us. Okay, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.